Welcome to In 5 Minutes. The agenda of this clip is to understand EEPROM, EEPROM and flash memories. We'll be doing this not only in this clip but a few clips following this as well. In order to understand these memories, we need to understand the concept of floating gate and also fallen northern tunneling. We'll start understanding the concept of floating gate here first. So here the name itself suggests that there has to be a gate which has to be floating. Here is my normal MOS transistor with metal, oxide and semiconductor which I have drawn. The difference between this transistor and the transistor with the floating gate is I have added an additional gate this is the poly gate which is kept floating. Floating means it is electrically isolated. It is not electrically connected to any other terminal or any other potential in your MOS transistor. If you are getting confused, I'll just show you what I have drawn and the blue lines around this floating gate is nothing but your SiO2 layer or the silicon dioxide or your oxide layer. So this is nothing but the cross sectional. This is my floating gate which is not connected to anything. This is my actual gate where I will be applying the gate voltage so it becomes a control gate and we know that there has to be an SiO2 layer, correct? So this is the SiO2 layer which is surrounding my floating gate. Now the whole idea is we are understanding floating gate because we want to understand a memory type which is EEPROM which is electrically programmable read only memory. You can program this memory electrically and when I say electrically you need to do something with your voltages in order to program this memory. Though it does not delete your memory because there is no erase word in the name of EEPROM. So it does not delete your memory or erase your memory electrically but you can still erase it in a different way. When you can erase and program it both electrically it will become electrically erasable programmable read only memory which also we would see. This is a symbol for the floating gate. Let's understand how programming takes place in floating gate. I'm just erasing this because I want to show you something. Technically, we'll be able to do the programming of the transistor for EEPROM by storing some charge on the floating gate. Let's understand this. Basically, this is the curve of ID versus VGS. When my MOS transistor is operating normally such that my VGS is written in the threshold voltage, the erase operation will happen in case of EEPROM. And if my threshold voltage is increased to such a high value, then my programming mechanism will happen in EEPROM. We'll understand how you can get a threshold voltage of such a high value and what we are trying to do. Basically, if this is my NMOS transistor, which is a normal transistor, when VGS is greater than VTN, we know that the transistor is turned on. I want to make this threshold voltage so high such that when I apply a VDD also at the gate, still my transistor will not turn on because threshold voltage is higher than VDD. And in doing so, we'll be able to program our EEPROM. Let's see what and how. But the thing which we understood from this part was we need to increase our threshold voltage and the uh, EEPROM revolves around storing the charge on the floating gate. Keep these two points in mind and we are set. So because we need to understand the threshold voltage, we need to understand the basics of threshold voltage. Here in the equation, I'm not going to take into consideration this part, which is the positive charge at the interface, which needs to be overcome by the threshold voltage or should be counted in the equation. I'm ignoring this term for the time being. QB, which is the depletion region charge density, is technically effectively negative for NMOS. So this minus of minus will become plus. So this is a positive term. Remember that. Now in a normal case, I have oxide capacitance as COX. In case of a poly gate, my COX would reduce by a factor of two. Let's see how. This is my normal gate. This is my poly gate. Between my normal gate and my poly gate, there will be a capacitance. Let's call it as C dash OX because there is an oxide which is present, right? You can see that. And between my poly gate and my actual substrate or my actual semiconductor, there'll be another COX, which is C dash OX. So I can easily make out that C dash OX is connected in series with C dash OX. And when they are connected in series, we know that this is what happens. So effectively C dash OX by two would be my new COX. If I put the COX back in this equation, as I said, this is a positive term. I know that if COX reduces, and there's a positive term, so my threshold voltage would increase. But this increase in the threshold voltage is very, very small. And that would be not of much use to us because we just discussed that we want to make the threshold voltage greater than VDD or a very high value threshold voltage in order to program my EEPROM. So for that, we will go back to the thing which we have already studied, how we can store the charge on the poly gate, or we will understand a concept called as hot electron effect, also known as channel hot electron injection or CHE. 